Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to learn to handle time series data in Pandas. There's a lot of time series data, so this I hope will be a very useful video. And we're going to specifically look at Pandas date time objects to do that with. Our imports, we're going to use the NumPy library, Pandas, of course, the um, standard Python date time library, which is separate from the Pandas one. And we're also going to import the random library so that we can generate random lists of numbers. So uh, first thing we want to figure out here is that we have in pandas, there's a to date time function that we can use to convert a variety of different inputs to pandas date time objects. So we can take a string in a variety of different formats. So you can see these are separated by slash or uh, hyphens. Or look, this is a regular Python datetime object, then these are NumPy datetime objects. So it can convert all of these to pandas datetime objects. So let's see, if we do this and then uh, A1, we get a datetime index. Now when we pass in this list, this is basically a Python list of what pandas can recognize as datetimes, it's going to convert them to datetime objects, and then it converts those datetime objects in a list into a datetime index, which it can use in a data frame. So these are datetime64 objects, is what they are. And it becomes a datetime index in pandas. So pandas will do its best to interpret what you're passing in and convert that automatically. And you can see in this case, it it can pick up whether it's a slash or a hyphen. And in some cases, the we put the year last. And in some cases, we put the, uh, the year first, right? Pandas is pretty good at figuring that out. But, you know, sometimes it helps to pass in an argument to explain exactly what format your date is in, just to avoid any confusion, to prevent pandas from screwing it up. But you can pass in an argument, a string basically, to explain the formatting of your date. Let's say, for instance, you have year and then day and then month, and pandas may not be able to figure that out. So what we could do is uh, pd dot to date time, and then we have a list of objects. Let's put in a year slash a date and then a month, I'll say 06. And I'll pass in another one. Okay, so now we have basically a list of dates that are in an unusual format. And we want to tell pandas that so that they, they can interpret it right. So what we do is just pass in a string, format equals, and this is a string, so we have quotes around it, we're going to have percent, capital Y, this is case sensitive. And then see, we have a slash. Look at how we have a slash between our dates. And then percent D, and then percent M. These are case sensitive. So lowercase D means day, and um, lowercase M means month. Now pandas will be able to interpret that correctly. And let's do a two. So it gets us the date time index, and you can see it converted these to pandas format, which is year, month, and then date. And of course, the to date time converter can also handle uh, hours and minutes. So here we actually put hours on a 24 hour clock, and then I put a decimal instead of a colon or a hyphen or whatever uh, between the hours and the minutes. So when we pass in our string format, we have year, day, month, right, because the day is still in the middle. And then I have hours dot minutes. And you see we just put a dot here in our string. So now we go A3 and run that. And you see it picked up 8 as the month and uh, 9 as the month. So if I swap those, it would pick up 6 as the month. It would be June 8 and June 9. But instead what I put in is August 6 and September 6 because of this. So we can also create a date time sequence with fixed intervals. So let's see how we can do that. First we'll create a Python list 
of some random numbers. So this will just give us a list of 30 random floating point values. So B2 is going to generate a date range for us. This is the pandas date range generator. So we pass in a starting date, the number of periods we want, 30 periods, and then the frequency. This can be months, days, years, hours, whatever we want. It can be minutes, every two minutes or whatever. Uh, I passed in one day is the argument, and you're passing this in as a form of a string. Python knows how to parse that string out, as long as you use the, the case-sensitive uh, uppercase Y, H, and M for year, hours, and minutes, and then lowercase D and M for day and month. So pandas can figure that out. And it's going to generate a date range for us, so let's see what that looks like. So it created a date-time index of dates starting on June 1 and 30 items. Now let's create a data frame from we have a date range and we have a list of random numbers. So we can do that by saying let's see we'll say df equals pd.dataframe and then we'll pass in those two arguments. We're going to pass in the data or the list of random numbers at, in the form of a dictionary. We'll just uh, arbitrarily call the um, the title for our data m, and in our date time index, we'll label it as the index. So we're going to call it index equals b2. So we have our date times listed in this date time index is b2. So we're going to pass that in as the index, and we'll print out the first five of those. So now since we have our date time object as the index, we actually, this is handy because we can, we can grab certain date ranges we want. So let's say we want 2020-06-02. Um, and then we can use a colon uh, to separate our range. 2020-06-04. Uh, and that will give us a date range of rows. So that grabs a date range. That's an easier way to slice than using loc or iloc. It's a little more convenient to have um, dates as your index. You can also grab um, ones that have, let's say, six as the month or whatever. You can also do stuff like this. Uh, every date before 2020-06-03, we could do that. And that gives us everything up to June 3rd. Now we'll create a random range of uh, NumPy floating point values using the np.random function. That'll give us 52 random floating points in a NumPy array. And then we can use b4. We'll make a date range out of it. So we want to set this for 52 periods. We're going to set periods equals 52. And frequency equals capital W, which is going to be a weekly interval. Now to create our data frame, we're going to say df equals p.dataframe. We have our numpy array for the data. We're going to pass in b3, and we're going to set our index equal to b4. And if we want to print out, let's say, the first five of these, df.head. There's our first five rows of data. So our date range is starting at 6.30 and they're a week apart. So we're seeing the first five results here. And if we wanted two weeks, we could just put 2W two two here, just as easy. So you may not always have a num fixed number of periods that you want to create a date range for. Uh, maybe you want to create a date range from a start date to an end date. You can also do that. The date range constructor works just as well that way. So let me just copy this example and I'll put it down here. B4 equals PD date range. So we can say 632, let's say now we know what the end date is, 2020-06-30. Let me change it to 2021. 
and we'll basically get the same result, I think. Four. There we go. So there's our date time index. We have 52 weeks evenly spaced, a week apart. In our next example here, we're going to learn how to write time series data to and from CSV files. So let's just create a quick D1 will be um, a list of floating point values. And D2 will be a list of integers. So random integers between 12 and 30. Seven values. And then D3 will be our date series. So we have a date range from uh, May 29. And then we have seven periods, and they're one day apart. Now when we create our data frame, we're going to say pd.dataframe. And what we want to pass into the constructor again is a dictionary. So we have a dictionary here of values, right? We have, let's call this, let's say alpha. And then alpha is D1, right? And then we have, we'll call the next one beta. And the values under beta are D2. So that's our data, right? We have the data. And then we want to use for row names our time series data, our dates. So we'll say index equals D3. And then we can print out our data frame. And you can see we get two columns of data, alpha and beta. And we get our time series here. Now if we wanted to write that to a CSV file, as I promised we would, uh, we can do to CSV, to underscore CSV. And then what we need to provide as an argument is the name of the CSV file that we want to write to. We'll call this file01.csv. So now we've written that to file01.csv, which let me see if I can find that. So here's what file01.csv looks like. Um, for column headers, we don't have anything for the first column, but with the second column is alpha and beta. And then we have our dates, and then we have the two columns of numbers, and they're all comma separated. So to read that back in, we say df equals pd. Note this is pd, not df.read pd.readcsv and then we pass in the name of the file which I'll just copy and paste this and then we can print out our data frame we'll put in df boom so it read it right back in but look what it did and inserted an extra column here because when uh, pandas reads in data it doesn't know that I want I want this first column to be the dates. So I have to tell it that. I have to tell it, hey, don't, don't create another column of, for our index. We want to use that first column of dates for our index. So the way we tell it that is we just say, oops, pass the column. Index underscore call equals zero. In other words, the first column we want to use for our index. And when we do that, boom, it pops that first column of dates into the index column. At least they look like dates, but they're actually not date objects. So let's say we print the type of index number two, which would be what, 531. So it's still calling it a string. So in order to fix that, we need to convert these strings to pandas date time objects. That's not very complicated. So we just need to tell it df.index is equal to, right now our index for the data frame is uh, strings, but we want to convert that to date time objects. So we're going to do is pd dot to date time. And then we'll pass in df.index as our argument. And I'll pass in a format string just to make sure it doesn't mess up our format. And then we can print out the class again, and it should print out uh, datetime objects. Yeah, now it prints it out as a timestamp. So another challenge you might have working with datetime objects is you may have already an existing spreadsheet that has separate columns for month, day, and year, and you want to merge those into a single datetime index. I'll also walk you through how to do that.
So let's say you have, I've already typed up here, a list of years, months, and days, and we've got a 100-item list. We're we also have a set of data that we're trying to add into our data frame. So what we really want is the, the date as the index and the data as our first column of data, okay, and inside a data frame. But we're not going to mess with the data first. We're, we First, we need to figure out how to construct these into a single column uh, of date time objects. So let's look at what we actually have here. If we print this out, we have, uh, we'll just print out one item from each one of these. I'll print out number five. So we print that out and we see we get a year, a month, a day, and um, a floating point value. So that's what one row of data looks like in our uh, data here. So to convert that, we're going to first create a data frame with three columns, year, month, and day. How do we do that? We'll call this df1 and pd.dataframe. We're going to pass in a dictionary, of course, with our year, month, and day. So we'll call year. Then we're going to convert this pd.toDateTime. This is pretty cool. We can use the to date time converter to pass an entire data frame that we just created with three columns in it. So df1 is the argument uh, into our date time converter. And we're going to assign the output, reassign it to the same variable name, data frame one. So now what data frame one looks like is this. Uh, let's just do head because we have 100 rows of data here. And our first five rows of data looks like this. And you can see this is a date time object. It's not actually a data frame now. Next, we'll create a series from our data. We'll see df2 equals pd.series. And we'll pass in our data to create a series out of that. And then we can concatenate uh, the date time index with the series of data that we just created. So I'll call this our data frame. And when we tell it to concatenate, we have to pass in which access we want it to concatenate on. So since we want to concatenate uh, vertically, we have to say access equals one. If we didn't pass in this access argument, it would just basically put the data on top of each other rather than beside each other. So now if we look at the first uh, five rows of data. Now we have a uh, date time object with a random floating point value in two columns. And then if you wanted, you can move this date time object to the index column. That would probably also make sense. But that's how we can convert separate columns of data for year, month, and day into a single date time object. First, we created a data frame with the year, month, and day in it, passing them in as a dictionary. And then we passed in that data frame into the two date time object to convert it into a date time object. Now, one last pretty useful feature is if sometimes uh, you may read in data from, let's say, a CSV file or whatever, it has the dates as the column indices rather than the row indices. So in pandas, you're normally going to want your dates as the row indices, not the column headers. So I'll show you how to transpose those. You can flip those like in a pivot table. So first, let's read in this um, CSV that I created, pivot.csv. We're just going to read it into a data frame. And then I'll print out the first five rows so you can see what that looks like. So you see we have our dates as the column indices. And this stretches over quite a ways if we, if we go over. So you've got a bunch of data, and you're going to want these dates, like I said, as your row indices, right? You want a single column of data. You want, you want to flip the, the rows and columns here. So this is not hard to do. Let's see. The way we do that is just df equals df dot capital T. And that tells pandas to transpose the row and columns. So when I run that, it flips the column and rows. So you can easily get these... Uh, date time objects into the, the row indices. That's a smarter way to structure your data frames in pandas. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.